down there. You hit yeah. with a 14. I will take that. And uh, he will take this. Ooh, nice. Very nice. As Orc 9, what kind of damage was that from the chromatic acid? Acid. Yeah, he basically just just melts into a pile of goo. That's right. You're all right, on acid. Right next and, to uh, Atticus is this warm corpse that's yeah. on the ground. Oh, sorry. <laughs> God. Raven will continue his circuit of staying uh, out of the way, uh, but continue to move. One, two, three, four, five. This looks nice. How in the heck do you guys know which uh, Nogra to attack? Because they both <laughs> look identical and sound uh, identical. Yeah. That's going to be good. We know the one getting beat up by the spiritual hammer is probably our guy. I'm just I'm just <laughs> yeah. guessing that. Because you've never seen him use that <laughs> yeah. type of magic before. I've, so. I've never seen him use yeah. the spiritual hammer before, so... All right, so Graven, we're going to uh, Nogara now. So Nogara, he's going to still call you an imposter. Uh, he's going to go ahead and... Uh, he's First, he's going to attack you with a spear. All right. And when he attacks you with a spear, hopefully he'll be able to use Grimps' Fury as well. Hit with an 18. Oh. Uh, chill. <laughs> All right. You got spell slots left? All right. Yep. All right. You got to be getting uh, I just That's the last of my first level slots. Oh, but right, I yeah. have three sorcery points. <laughs> Ah, so you can yeah you can get more uh, spell slots. All right, so with this bonus action, he's going to use a spiritual weapon to attack you as well. All right, that is a fourteen, which is a miss. And now Nogura, he goes into a a full blown run, uh, trying to get away from you. The opportunity attack. As he oh yeah, as he yells, you may have won this fight, but we. The orcs of the many arrow tribes will win the war as he starts to run away. Thank you for the follow as well. So, Gildan, uh, go ahead and do your attack baby. of opportunity. Son that is a, a yeah. miss. <laughs> Curly Ewa, you can go ahead and get your attack of opportunity. Uh, There's got to be something wrong with the dice roller any. there, Doug. I don't know. <laughs> I, I think I have to create it. I don't have anything for... Uh, you don't have a, just a... No weapons. Yeah. You should. Don't you have a, a staff or something like that? No, I don't have any weapons. Just give I, an I, unarmed strike thing. Into the add, your, uh, add your strength bonus. It should be one less than that, so 19. <laughs> that's That would be a hit. That's good. 19 is a hit. So what is, uh, roll. What is unarmed what is damage? damage? 1d3 or something for unarmed? Or what is it? I think it's one, isn't it? I don't know. Let me let me get out my uh, player's handbook. I think it's in the weapon section, isn't it? You could yeah. grapple him. <laughs> no, not with an opportunity attack. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, that's wasn't prepared for that. Unarmed, making an attack. It's attack. a one bludgeoning. Yep, one bludgeoning. <laughs> oh, that's, that's Punched him in the shin as he ran by. So you. I'll I'll, uh, I'll add one on to him as he runs past you. All right. So now. I'm going to give him an attack of opportunity from the orc there too because he he still thinks that this is a uh, this is a uh, you the imposter. Yeah, go orc, go. <laughs> Got like dumb works. Sometimes. All right, so he misses. So Lucky see. bastard. A little too dumb. Yeah. yeah. All right, so he's right here. He starts to run. All right, so now. Curlio, you're up. Go get him, Curlio. Uh, you just need to be next to him after your move, so I'll get a sneak attack. On oh, him. okay. Uh, well, I think I'm gonna attack from range and then I'll move up. How yeah, that? sounds good. Sounds great. I want to use uh, see here. I want to use a second level spell slot for chromatic orb. Okay. Nobody using magic missile, man. Magic missile. Nice hit. Wow, that's going to be a nice, and nice bit of damage. Be, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be acid. Ooh, I like that. Very nice. 19 damage. Yeah, that, that hit hit him hard. He almost, he almost falls over face first. Anything else for you, Carlito? I'm going to use a bonus action 
uh, to use all my sorcery points to restore a second level slot. slot. And then I'm going right. to move up to him. Right there. <laughs> so Nicely nice. done. Nicely done. If I can never roll above a 10, we might have a chance to kill him. Well, I was going to assist you, but I figured that'd probably be a waste. Yep. No, just hit him for 19. Sounds like a good choice. All right, the orc's going to move up and attack Gildan with his great axe. He doesn't feel like running down the Bring it, uh, fake Norgra. So he misses you. Hey, I'm the fake Gildan. <laughs> the nine lives <laughs> of Skelp. I'm an orc. I'm uh, magic up to look differently. You're all dolled up like Atticus. Nope. <laughs> No one's that dolled up. <laughs> All right, so uh, uh, one was a It takes one was work to look this good. It does. Orc number three is going to reciprocate that back and attack the elf scout. I mean, did anyone else misses? get a proposal during this fight? No. <laughs> yeah, <build him. laughs> yeah, you got a pretty man. All right, I'm going to disengage my bonus action, and then I'm going to move to there. <laughs> uh, and we will try this again. All right, come on, baby. No whammies, no whammies, no whammies. There we go. Hit. That's better. And let's throw a little... Put a little little sauce on that one. <laughs> yeah, get a little bit of tiger, tiger sauce, yeah. A little tiger sauce action on that orc. Very nice. Wow. An orc goes down. Yeah, that chromatic orb really did a, really did a number good. on him. So. Yeah, good right. job. Norga goes down. Um... All right, and yeah, I think I'm going to. I guess when I move with the rest of my move action, I'm going to shift back to my shield in case that bastard attacks me. Okay, and I'm done. Atticus, wow, <laughs> very nice. Wow, that wow, is my that is, is awesome. All over the place, clutch. Yeah, it is. I uh, I stand up. Okay, and he applauds himself. Yeah, I think that Thank might be you. my best choice. Yes, I will applaud myself and ca and heal myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. Typical. Do you ever feel like you're playing whack a mole? <laughs> Very kill thyself. All right. So let's see. You did cure wounds at eight healing. Very nice. All of the orcs charge right towards Atticus again. No, I, take I take a bow. I take a bow. Ron is up. Ron will fire twice at this at this orc down here. The the first one. He's going to kind of get in a little bit better of a uh, have a little bit better of a vantage point. Uh, and as a free action, <coughs> Ron he he does tell you that uh, I don't want anything for helping you. Just for you humans to stay out of the awe deep forest and stay out of our old elvish rooms. And then he lets go another arrow. Well, the first arrow, he's going to attack the third orc here. And he hits. And it looks like he kills orc number three. So, wow, that, uh, that elf actually survived that. That was pretty clutch. Now, he's going to move up a couple more, about ten more feet and attack orc number eight with his third attack. And, and he doesn't have any more, no more of the archer's eyes, so. Second attack, ooh. Oh, he doesn't that, need the archer's eyes. Yeah, that was awesome. Too bad I didn't have an extra archer eye. That would, that would be awesome. All right, so, ooh, 13 damage to the orc. He's very badly wounded, very, barely just He's kind of down on one knee, and he staggers back up. All right, so the next elf, he's going to run up and try to put this orc out of his misery with his first arrow. That's and that is a hit with a 16. And he is incapacitated. All right, let's see. Orc number eight is out, down and out. Now, the elf is in this uh, spiritual hammer also. Uh, it, it's done too. And then this other elf is going to move up 10 more feet and then also fire at Curlyoa because he's still oh, disguised as, <laughs> as, the, uh, as the orc. 
And he hits with a 19. Oh, I'm not going to waste my only spell slot on a shield, sorry. <laughs> and he hits you for a total of 10 piercing damage. Uh oh. Yeah, Elf Scout 5 gets to go, too. <laughs> <laughs> you sure you don't use that shield? Made my <laughs> <laughs> Alright, the disguise is still up. You can, can we call uh, out as a free action in uh, Elvis? Sure, yeah, you guys can do that if you want. I'll yeah, say, uh, I would totally rape him if not. That is uh, <laughs> our sorcerer friend in disguise. Nice use of the language. Well, can I, can I drop the spell? <laughs> that would be Sure. Better. Yeah, well, well they, they kind of you know, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, the commander of the elves, he tells everyone to, Ron, he tells everyone to lower their bows. He says, we're not here to kill the humans. That's this good, because otherwise disguised. we have to have Sylvia come by and interrogate <laughs> you fuckers. <laughs> oh, my God. Not Sylvia. We've heard of her. And they all start to run immediately towards the mountains. <laughs> You're right. You're right. <laughs> I mean, talk. Talk to you guys. We don't want to be thrown out of a window as a corpse! And they, they start to run. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so you guys are out of combat. And uh, once again, Rond, he introduces himself. He says, uh, you're welcome for us saving your lives. Very arrogant, by the way. And all of the, the elves, they lower their bows. And they ask you where you're from. We've not seen you around in these parts of our territory. Ah, uh, we're coming up from Nightstone. Uh, just arrived. We were uh, called to meet someone there. And uh, we found that the villagers were in trouble and had went forth to the dripping caves to uh, hide out and, and, and wait out the uh, troubles that had befallen their town. So you're saying that Nightstone was attacked? We've Nightstone been chasing was, these orcs for several days. We see that. Well, we're glad that we could help you kill off these orcs as they were invading your territory. Well, we do appreciate the help. You know, the the humans at Nightson, we have had our differences in the past. The you know the leader of Nightstone a year ago, uh, Nander, his name was, kept raiding our forest, the Ardeep forest. And you guys know that the Ardeep Forest is just a little bit northeast of here. And he says, this Nander character was going into the woods and basically pillaging all of our ancient civilizations. So we did not want that. We tried to negotiate something with the Nanders, but he continued to raid our forest and take all of our treasures. So we attacked Nightstone. We killed him. And then when his his wife, Lady Nander, was in charge. We actually peacefully negotiated a treaty to where they would not go into our deep forests anymore. The only way that they would go in there is to hunt. They've fulfilled their end of the bargain, so we are fulfilling our end of the bargain by giving some protection as well. So... Well, Lady Nander has evidently uh, recently passed away as well. But we would be happy to make mm, sure that that truce uh, holds up with the, the new rulers of, of Nightstone. Do they have any family that is going to be taking it over, or is Nightstone going to be, and he kind of does the air quotes, sold to the highest bidder? Well, we have uh, kept the Zentarum from taking o over, uh, at least under management that would probably continue the raids so uh, we're still here to negotiate that we have we have not yet determined who's going to take over Nightstone is anyone here in the Emerald Enclave mm. yeah Sylvia yeah <laughs> she should be Zentrum. <laughs> I'm changing that to Zentrum. no I'm just kidding <laughs> those, those Zentrum are, are real assholes <laughs> yeah so uh, you can actually see that they have the you know the leaflet of, of the you know of the emeralds. So, all right. Now, they ask you if you need anything else. Do you need any kind of, you know, or do you need any kind of escort? You know, they see your horses and whatnot. They've kind of scattered a little bit, but after several minutes, you guys are able to, to round them up again. 
And he yeah, asked you, where, where are you going? We're looking caves, and we have heard that there are a lot of different possible caves that, that, that might, uh, you know, lead to, and we would hate to, uh, you know, go down the wrong path or, or you know, not able to find the, the villagers. Yeah, he, he points you in the right direction and, uh, you know, verifies it on your map as well that you have the, the correct location. And he says, what is so important about the Dripping Caves? If, if you don't mind me asking. It, it's just where the villagers have, uh, have taken refuge and, uh, and, and we're there to let them know that Nightstone has been liberated and is now safe for them to return back and to, and to begin rebuilding. So what, uh, what were the orcs? Were they the ones that actually attacked Nightstone? Was it the? Uh, there's no, also a large band worse. of goblins and ogres in the area as well. So, goblins did attack. Uh, you know, our our dwarven uh, and human friends here can can attest to that. Uh, but more troubling was uh, there were some large boulders dropped from the sky from a a cloud giant fortress or city. Cloud that, giants. Whoa. That destroyed much of the town. Hmm. Was there a reason? Was it, I mean, did you attack the giants first? Well, did Nightstone attack the giants first? Nightstone or? has no uh, capability to attack the yeah. giants whatsoever. So this was unprovoked as far as we know. Well, I, I will say this, my friends. That there has been word spreading around the force that the giants are in some kind of uprising. So maybe that is maybe that is the reason. Uh, some Something about uh, their... Social order is 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 out of whack, and it, and it seems like all of the different giants now are are starting to to try to fight for the top spot where the storm giants once uh, you know held the top spot. But but that's just hearsay, and that's just rumors going around the force. I I cannot verify that, but just uh, be wary of that. Yeah, certainly. Well, is there anything that uh, that we can assist you with? You know, when we go to meet with with the uh, leaders of Nightstone. Nope. What I was here for, we have accomplished by killing the orcs, and we will be heading back to the Ardeep Forest well, now. There, there might be some more orcs uh, that were chasing the townsfolk. So, would, uh, would it would it be possible for you to come with us? I can. I will be able to take you. To these dripping caves, I do know where they're at, but I will have to be heading back into the forest. My companions and my sons. We have to take care of the dead that we have, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, and as as we're kind of talking, I'll uh, kind of be poking and prodding a little bit. The uh, I'm starting I'm starting to remember. Oh yeah, we need to loot these bastards. <laughs> so if, how could you uh, forget that? I know. <laughs> Ron says, we, we are in no need of treasure. You may help yourselves. And the elves start to kind of, you know, gather up their their fallen comrades. And a couple of the other elves go off and bring back several horses. And they, you know, put the bodies up on, on the horses and whatnot. He says, is there anything else, my friend? I will de definitely take you to the caves. But after that, I will need to head back to the Ardeep Forest, my companions and myself. I know, I think that should do it. Thank you very much for your assistance. Uh, no problem. So, as for loot, uh, there is going to be a total of... Uh, Doug, go ahead and give me a 10d10 roll. Give me a 10d10 roll. 10d10. 12d10 roll. Sorry about that. 12d10 oh, roll. Oh, all right. So we'll add two more to that. Yeah. All right. So ah. there's going to be a total of 69 gold. Also, there is, there's a total of 69 gold, right? I'm not going to roleplay that with you, Doug. I'm not going to roleplay it. <laughs> <laughs> I know you hey want guys, to. I 20 gold. We'll wait till after the stream, Doug. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right so Atticus, a... Atticus is prone all of a sudden again. What's going on with that? It's more comfortable down here. Oh, uh, it's too good. Now, also, there's a, a suit of chain mail. And it's a medium size, so a human could definitely wear it. So there's a suit of chainmail. So if anybody wants that, it is it is damaged a little bit because of all of the you know damage that uh, Garrosh had taken. But it 
can definitely be repaired for you know just like a, a few gold. And you know that there was a smithy back there in Nightstone too, but you know there was nobody around. <laughs> maybe they're in the, maybe they're in the dripping caves, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you found a, a chainmail suit of armor, and you also found uh, a fairly decorative great axe as well. Off of, off of, off yeah, uh, of garages, of course. So there's a chainmail, axe, and sixty nine gold on all of the different uh, orcs. And you know, Ron, he says that they are in no need of treasure, and you may help yourselves. We throw it on the horses, bring it back. I'm sure, we can sell it. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. So anything else you guys want to head to the Dripping Caves now? Okay. So Ron, as you guys, uh, it's it, I would say it's maybe maybe a quarter of a mile. It's actually a fairly a fairly short distance. Well, yeah, they're right over there. To the Dripping Caves. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they're all watching yeah. as we're getting killed by orcs. And you can see that there are quite a few Different, you know, sort of up on the side of like a, like a rocky, I want to say embankment, and you can see that there's several caves, and Ron tells you that these are all just shallow caves, but this is the cave that you're looking for, and he points it out to you, and then he says, I hopefully, we'll see each other down the line, and he says that he is sorry to hear about Nightstone, and he will also talk to his elders and see if there's anything that they can do to help rebuild and help, you know, the humans rebuild Nightstone. Thank you very much. I'm to stay out of the Yordid Forest. What, what was that? I said, we'll encourage them to stay out of the Yordid Forest. Well, they keep calling it the Ardid Ard Forest. I assume it was yours. Uh, it is. We've been there for many, many, many years. It's not mine, per se, but it is ours. Well, it's theirs. <laughs> I, th I think we should rest Silly for a dwarf. bit and bandage our wounds up. <laughs> that sounds like a great plan. Yeah, before okay. we head back with a bunch of villagers to defend. Okay. Mm. So you guys want to grab a short rest, then? I mean, meat shields. Yep. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Since you guys had such a massive combat. Uh, you guys can go ahead and have a short rest. Deduct a, deduct a ration from your sheet. You guys can go ahead and use your hit dice recovery rolls. Nice. Now seeing that it's 1135, do you guys want to continue on inside of the cave and enter the cave or do you guys want to call it here for the night and continue next week? I'll let you guys make that decision. I could, but if we do, I need a quick bio break, I think. All right. Up to you guys, whatever you I guys would, want to do. Yeah, I, I, I can need keep a going for break. another okay. hour. All right. I'm, I'm open. All right. Chris, how about you? Good. You're good? All right, cool. All right. Well, let's go ahead and take a, uh, let's take a quick break here then. Let's take a uh, about a five minute break. You guys have been escorted by this by this elf, and as you're you know traveling through this very you know this last quarter quarter mile or so to the caves, you know like I said it's it's up on an uh, like a rocky embankment, and you can see that there's multiple caves, and he points you to the the correct caves, and there's you know pine trees all around. It's a, a beautiful day outside. You guys have gotten an, an hour rest, so you've been able to use your uh, your hit dice recovery, hit point rolls, and you guys are at the mouth of the cave. I mean, is there anything else you guys want to do before you go to the mouth of the cave? Or are you guys just diving right on in? I think yeah. a short rest, I think. Yeah. I mean, I'd yeah, probably just, get acquainted with, with several of the other elves that are there, because, you know, surrounded yeah. by humans and dwarves all the time, so speaking... speaking uh, with with a fellow elf is probably a, a welcome experience. You're an elf and is in. Oh my word. Yeah. And, it, <laughs> and they, they thank you as well for, for Being helping. Being a thief and, bastard. 
You know, he apologizes for company. being a little. He says <laughs> he apologizes for being a little arrogant, but he really didn't know. You know, really didn't oh, know okay. you all. So. I'm an elf. I don't even see it as arrogance. I'm yeah. just like you see it as a, just a typical conversation. Like, yeah. Yeah. Whatever. That's just how That's we right. roll. We just assume you're going to be a douchebag whenever you speak, so it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so you guys place your, place your tokens on the map where you guys would be. This is what you see. You see the, the entrance to the cave, and you guys have followed the tracks, and also with the guidance uh, of the elves, up to the cave mouth. And this cave mouth is, is about 12 feet wide, very tall. 20 feet wide. Lots of tracks and footprints. <laughs> small footprints. Large footprints. So definitely several different types and sizes of creatures have been coming in and out of this cave. And giant size footprints? Uh, almost. <laughs> so as you guys kind of look into the cave, it is pitch black dark once you look in about 20 or 30 feet from the sun shining in. Uh, all see. I, I know Curly. Uh, Curly, oh, you now have dark vision. Everybody has dark vision now, right? Except for Atticus, right? Except for Atticus. I don't. Yeah, yep. yeah. He's the oddball out. We just so, tell him what he sees. <laughs> we're like, oh, just keep keep walking straight. And then after, we're like, oh no, you were supposed to duck right there. This lag. Yeah. Well, I'll just walk in out first with my light. And you guys can hide in the shadows. There you go. Yeah. So you do know it's dark inside, Atticus, and all of you, the, you know, Curlio and Graven and, and Gildan, you can see inside, and beyond this cave mouth is a vast cavern, and you can see that there is a, a forest of stalagmites in the center of this cavern, and then your, your vision starts to kind of fade out, and, you know, you can also see that there are, you see inside there's ledges on, on both the right and the left-hand side, and there's also water dripping as well. So you can start to hear, you know, water dripping inside of this cave. You know, you see pools of, of you know, very dull water, little puddles of water, you know, on the, on the ground all over the place. Plus the stalagmites, the ledges, and all that other good stuff. Nice, nice water drop there. I think we found the dripping caves. You, you did. Next, I'll look for mushrooms. Are there mushrooms? mushrooms. Not right here where you're at. Damn yes. It. I'm going to go ahead and cast light on um, one of my torches. Okay. All right. Sounds good. You cast it. Alakazam. Boom. You have light. 20 and 20. That's right. You got light. Now you're a great big target. You stand right there. Move forward. <laughs> That's it. I'm going I'm to lead the way. I'm going to negotiate our way through this. Ooh, okay, like let me tell you. <laughs> See how I negotiated that orc encounter, right? Yeah, that's right. It went great. Mm -hmm. It went Fucking great. Orcs. <laughs> <laughs> the only good orc is a dead orc. I tell you what, first there were orcs, and then elves showed up, and I, I was thinking, oh my god, we did die back in the town, and I become, the, I've gone to hell now. You got saved by elves. That's got to be embarrassing. It was for elves an orc. and orcs and nothing else, and you lost. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna so. precast with my last spell slot. I'm gonna cast uh, alter self so that I can uh, change shape. Okay. What are what are you altering yourself to? My, I'm gonna grow my claws out. Okay. That sounds good. All right, so as you guys look into the cave, you guys can basically see this. It's a giant cup. Yeah. It's a goblet. It is. <coughs> this is about what you guys can see a little bit more. Hey. Got sixty foot dark vision, I think. What is uh Does everybody else have sixty? Yeah, I got sixty. Yeah, absolutely. Right, there's about fifty. There's about sixty feet. So as you are as you are entering the cavern, you all of a sudden you start to hear a oh, I'm singing in the mud bath. 
gosh, I'm singing in the mud bath. And it, you, you can hear this. You see this ogre basically taking a bucket and dumping mud over him, you know, dripping 